What's going on, everybody? And I hope you're enjoying your Thursday afternoon so far. This is MYG Jeffy T85 here, and I want to talk about the Brooklyn Nets and one of the keys to this team on why they could become a little bit of a sneaky team going into the NBA playoffs and why they might not. And a lot of it, in my opinion, and I've spoken about this player before and why I believe he is the key to the net success if they have any type of success heading into the playoffs, whether it's the playing game or they play in the, the as the sixth seed going into the playoffs. Cam Johnson. <clears throat> Cam Johnson, who recently just turned 27 years old earlier around this month. To me, he is going to be the key to this Brooklyn Nets team, and he showed it last night. When he is able to make his three-point shots, he is a guy that can become a weapon on this Nets team because of his incredible three-point shooting. Obviously, especially what he's been able to do with the Nets since he was traded to Brooklyn. And he's played in 26 games right now overall with the Nets where he started tw all 20 of those games and he's had about 30 minutes per game. That's about five minutes more than he was playing in Phoenix where he's more of a complimentary piece. He's attempted at least two more field goals with the Nets than he did with the Suns. His field goal percentage is actually a little bit lower, though. It's about two, about two tenths of a field goal percentage down from what he was doing in Phoenix at 44, about 45 percent compared to Phoenix, where he's 47. <laughs> His three-point percentage is definitely down. He was hitting about 46% with the Suns, whereas now he's only hit about 37. He's averaged about... He's actually his two-point percentage is up, though. His two-point field goal percentage is up by at least 5% overall. His points per game is up to about 17 points per game, which is good. The Nets need him to score. There's a reason why they call him twin, along with Michael Bridges, who's been unbelievable with the Nets since he got traded over there. His rebounding has been up with the Nets. His block shots has been about the same. His steals per game have been up with the Nets. His assists have been up with the Nets. So his numbers, for the most part, have improved. The one thing that has been down has been his three-point percentage. And that's what the Nets need to get from this guy. He has been, overall, a career 39-40% to three-point shooter. So right now, he's shooting underneath his career average with the Brooklyn Nets since he was traded back near the trade deadline in the trade that involved Kevin Durant. <laughs> they need Cam Johnson to be able to score, and he did that last night. Cam Johnson was great last night. He scored 31 points. He had about seven, he had about six assists and about seven rebounds. A complete game for Cam Johnson, and the best part about it, he was near perfect from the three-point line. He was he shot about six for eleven from the three point line. I might be I might be off a little bit on the numbers. It was like six or eight for eleven. If he can shoot that well from the three point line, it makes this Nets team more deadly because right now the three best players on this team consistently have been Spencer Dinwiddie, Nicholas Claxton, and Michael Bridges. Cam Johnson is that wild card. Because of the, the type of play that he had last night. And I've mentioned it. This dude has the ability. Cam Johnson has the ability to light it up for around 30, 20, 25, 30 points. And he did it again last night. And it's very interesting to see that the, the Nets right now. And the two last wins they've had over the Heat. And then last night against the Rockets. Those were Cam Johnson's two best games in this stretch. Before that, he's been slumping big time. He's only shooting about 30% from the three-point line. <laughs> and this is an important season for Cam Johnson, too, because he's going into restricted free agency this upcoming offseason, and most people believe he might be commanding a salary of about 18 to $20 million per season. Now, will the Nets be willing to pay that type of deal for Cam Johnson, for a guy that is right now shooting underneath his three-point average, under 39%, but he has that ability to be able to light it up for around 30, uh, you know, around um, 20, 25, 30 points? Yeah. 
It's really the question right now. Is Cam Johnson going to be able to be more consistent? Because we know the Nets right now are probably going to be building around Michael Bridges, Nicholas Claxton, and I might even have to throw Spencer Dinwiddie in there because of his leadership. <laughs> Cam Johnson, is the is he going to be part of the equation? He's 27 years old. So essentially, you're going to be getting this kid, if you give him a deal, you're going to be getting him during his prime years. But then you got to think about... Dinwiddie, who's going to have an expiring contract soon. you got to think about Bridges. He's probably going to deserve a long-term deal. Claxton is probably going to get a, a bigger deal. you got to think about how to build around the core of this basketball team and who you believe is going to be part of the core of your basketball team going forward. For me, I strongly think about A, Signing my uh, Nick Cam Johnson for multiple reasons because of his three-point shooting that he could show. I believe he's just in a cold spurt right now, but when he's getting going, he could be an offensive playmaker for this team. Now I know it was against Houston. Houston is one of the worst teams in the NBA. Don't take stock in what Houston's been doing, but still, there have been moments of him breaking out of this slump that he has been in recently, and the Nets they might be smart to try and see if they can get the most out of this guy. <laughs> by maybe taking a chance and potentially going out there and looking to sign him long term. Because if you don't, who's replacing him? That's what you got to think about too. Who on your team right now could do what Cam Johnson is doing? And he's a good defensive player. He provides you length. He's going into the, uh, pro he's going into the prime years of his career. There's not a lot of players in this Nets team that can do that. Unless you're going to utilize him in a sign and trade. But at the same time... You right now believe Michael Bridges is the key to your team going forward. And Bridges and Johnson are very close. There's a reason why they call these two twins. Are you willing to upset and frustrate your potential core player of your team? But are you willing to generate the type of money to bring back Cam Johnson, who has been very erratic for the Nets, in order to make Bridges happy? We already tried this with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, and it blew up in our face. But I'm really curious to see what Cam Johnson is going to do the rest of these six games of the season, starting on Friday when we take on the Atlanta Hawks in another big key game. Because the Nets right now, they were a full game above Miami for the set for the sixth seed, and they make it two games because of the fact the Nets have the tiebreaker over Miami because they swept them 3-0. to zero. And Cam Johnson has got to be one of those pieces that has got to emerge for this Brooklyn Nets team going forward. <laughs> So I am going to be looking to see what Cam Johnson can do during these last six games of this stretch and when we get into the NBA playoffs. That will determine on what kind of deal he might get from Brooklyn in terms of restricted free agency and if he could be part of the long-term future with this Brooklyn Nets team because he's still young. 27 years old is not old. And you're telling me I could build on a team with Spencer Dinwiddie, uh, Cam Johnson, Michael Bridges, Nicholas Claxton as your core, and you add on after that, that's not half bad. And you could add on the bench, draft some good players, maybe sign or make some trades in free agency, and build on that core. You just build on the talent as you go. That's not bad. Not, it's not great. It's not going to light the world up, but it's still a, very, it's a pretty good core to have on your team. So we'll wait and see what's going to happen with the Brooklyn Nets these last six games. But either way, I'm very encouraged by what I saw from Cam Johnson. Maybe he's breaking out of this shooting slump. But he's the key to this team, in my opinion, for the rest of these last six games and going into the NBA playoffs and what he could bring this Nets basketball team. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Give a sub to NYGJeffyT85 for more news updates and shadows surrounding the Brooklyn Nets. And let me know in the comments section what you think about Cam Johnson being the key to this Brooklyn Nets team going forward. And always, turn on that bell for notifications on when, next, when the next video or short will be dropping on the channel surrounding the Brooklyn Nets. I thank you very much, everybody. I hope you all have a great rest of your Thursday. Take it easy and let's go Brooklyn Nets. As always, it's a Nets world and we are all just living in it.